Uh, good afternoon. We will discuss normal pressure hydrocephalus. Uh, classic clinical triad first described by Hakim and Adams in 1965. There is gait disturbance, urinary incontinence, and dementia. Generally, gait disturbance plus one additional feature is required to consider the diagnosis. Secondary forms of or other secondary forms of NPH. Uh, that is trauma, hemorrhage, infection, mass lesions, or delayed aqueductal stenosis. CSF dynamics. CSF formation normal 0.4 ml per minute. And in NPH, it's 0.25. In CSF volume, it's 150 ml normal and 300 ml in NPH. Turnover rate in ml per day is normal 4 and in NPH, it's 1.2. Pathophysiology, increased venous resistance, altered expression of molecules regulating CSF production and deabsorption. Uh, epidemiology prevalence is 21.9 per 1 lakh. Incidence is 5.5 per 1 lakh. And race and sex are not associated. Gate disturbances. Most common initial uh, symptom present in 90% patient. Uh, initially unsteadiness, frequent falls, slow, uh, slow, slowness and difficulty initiating or difficulty on turning. The magnetic gate which is broad base and uh, slow and short steps. Maintained arm swing and increased tone, exaggerated reflex and weakness unusual. Gate, slowness of the gate is responsive to shunt. Appendicular tremor occurs in 40% uh, of uh, NPS patient which uh, do not respond to VP shunt. Pathophysiology of gait dispenses, uh, compression of uh, internal capsule fibers by distended third ventricle and disturbances in basal ganglia pathway, compression of brainstem structures such as pedunculopontine nucleus, urinary incontinence uh, which uh, frequently manifests as frequency, urgency and urge incontinence, uh, Sakakibara et al found that 95% of 41% patient with possible uh, idiopathic NPH had urodynamic evidence of detrusor overactivity. Uh, due to involvement, these are due to involvement of sacral fibrocorticospinal tract and differential diagnosis of uh, urine incontinence, BPH, autonomic dysregulation, anticholinergic and diuretics. Dementia, uh, the third feature, uh, which occurs in less than 5% of all cases, uh, sub it's uh, subcortical frontal disc executive syndrome, memory loss, decreased attention, impaired planning, slowness of thought and apathy, apraxia, aphasia, agnosia, which occurs in Alzheimer's disease, multi infarct dementia, frontotemporal dementia, and asymmetric tremors, tremors led by rigidity that occurs in daily body disease. Dementia, even uh, MMSC is mo uh, more than 25 can have deficit, correlates with vascular risk factors. Progressive dementia with normal gait, consider if there is a progressive dementia with normal gait, then consider other diagnosis. Uh, differential di diagnosis of gait disturbances, gait disturbances and dementia. Vascular, uh, that, that is stroke and uh, Binswanger disease, in degenerative Parkinson's, AD and Cadacil, and miscellaneous uh, cervical spinal myelopathy, lumbar canal stenosis, and diabetic neuropathy. Imaging, EVAN index is more than 0.3, bicordate ratio more than 0.25, temporal horn enlargements, periventricular signal changes, aqueduct or fourth ventricular flow voids, supportive and not required. Uh, these are the uh, supportive which may not be required. Radionucleotide cystinogram, there is a delayed clearance. In sign MRI, there is increased ventricular flow rate. And inspect the, uh, on inspect estazolamide, decreased periventricular perfusion, not reversed with estazolamide. And this is um, Evans ratio, bifrontal and biparietal, and the bicordate ratio more than 0.25 in MRI, uh, periventricular uh, uh, signal changes. Diagnosis, uh, the following are the criteria for probable possible diagnosis of NPH. Uh, prognosis test, A should not be considered an exclusionary criteria in those uh, without other surgical risk factors. In lumbar puncture, the sensitivity is 26%, specificity 100%, extended lumbar drainage 50 to 80% sensitive and 80% specific. CSF outflow resistance me measurement more than 18 mm Hg per ml per minute, that is 46% sensitive and 87% specific. Sign phase contrast MRI insufficient evidence to correlate ventricular stroke volume with outcome. Tap test 40 to 50 cc uh, is tapped, gait was formally assessed pre and post tap with the gait scale. Gait scale is walking score plus step, so step score plus time score. The step score is based on the number of the steps required to walk 10 meter. The time score is based on the amount of time required to walk 10 meter. Cognitive function was also assessed pre and post step with mental status screening. Uh, post step assessment were conducted within 2 to 4 hours after the tap test. Extended lumbar drainage. CSF is drained at the rate of 10 to 15 uh, ml per hour for 72 hours. Risk includes headache, radiculopathy and bacterial meningitis. Positive predictive value is 90% and uh, negative predictive value is 78%. If it is a positive extended lumbar drainage, then we go for shunt. If negative, then there is a risk benefit ratio. Uh, 
practice guidelines high csf pressure should prompt investigation for a secondary cause of hydrocephalus response to 40 ml to 50 ml high volume lumbar tap suggests a potential benefit for shunting an extended lumbar tap may be used to evaluate those who do not respond to a high volume tap there is no substantial predictive value for to mri csf flow studies treatment medical and uh, this is a temporary uh, management estazolamide and high volume tap surgery for patient with favorable risk benefit ratio in surgery we can go for shunt or etv shunt uh, bp shunt low pressure programmable shunt preferred no study has shown significant benefit with a particular type of shunt or wall etv patient with relative aqueductal stenosis then we go for etv triventricular hydrocephalus with uh, normal pressure hydrocephalus and gangemi at all reported 72% improvement and a low rate of complication in complication there is 3 to 4% risk of intracranial hemorrhage 1 to 2% mortality 2 to 17% subdural hematoma shunt blockage can be the shunt infection hardware disconnection or shunt tube metallic material allergy outcome or period of 10 years and uh, 99% rate of death 1% subdural hematoma 3% infection then shunt infection and uh, need for shunt revision was 33% the pooled mean response rate to shunting for idiopathic nps was 59% in meta analysis in those with good long term survival sustained improvement in uh, improvement is possible with a rate of 39% documented after 5 years thank you